Clark repertory, there's a Gogur Bonninghausen's repertory, Kent repertory, Boric repertory, Roberts repertory. So these are many, many different types of repertories. How many of us actually use these repertories? So I'm going to tell you step by step a little bit about some of them today. <clears throat> Very popular repertories, complete repertory, which is known as the biggest repertory. And as we speak, there are many, many repertories. Kent repertory, Bonninghaus and Boger Synoptiki, Fatak, um, Borik repertory, Clark repertory, Nair repertory, Allen's repertory, complete repertory. And there are many newer repertories also, like Murphy repertory, Iziaga repertory, Relationships repertory, Mirili's repertory, Massimo, Shorten repertory. So you can imagine the world is full of repertories if you really want to analyze. Every repertory has a speciality or an individuality. And the idea is you should know when to use which repertory. That's the whole secret of knowing to know what repertory is. For example, there is a repertory. Let me just give you, an, give you a little bit of an example. For example, there is one of my favorite, favorite repertories. And if you're watching me on my YouTube channel, you'll know this. One of my favorite repertories is Fatak repertory. This is totally an alphabetical repertory. It starts from A and it goes till Z. One of my patients gave a very, very peculiar symptom. She had very bad skin problems and she would say, whenever I bathe with oil, I feel better. So there is a very interesting rubric in Fatak. Have a look. Oil application ameliorate. And there's a single remedy here, euphorbium. So interesting. So Fatak repertory has this many, 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 many beautiful gem of rubrics that you should know if you really want to master homeopathy. And it's an alphabetical repertory and there are many, many peculiar rubrics. Very similar to it is another repertory. Uh, let's talk about Bonninghausen's repertory. This is also a repertory which I talk a lot about and I do a lot of workshops about. In fact, uh, sir, you will know, you will find it very interesting. But in today's times, many, many cases of COVID-19 and also post-COVID-19, uh, one of the best approaches to use is Bonninghausen's approach because in Bonninghausen, there's a chapter called as Fever and Chills. Okay. And this is a beautiful, beautiful chapter to treat a lot of fever cases. So I use this a lot. For example, in fever chapter, well, there's a very interesting group of rubrics. First thing when you see a fever case in Bonninghausen is you try to understand which is the type of fever. Is it a bilious type of fever? Is it a catarrhal type of fever? It is a dentition type of fever. It is a gastric type of fever. So in this way, when I see a fever first, I classify them into which type of fever. And then depending on that, I kind of analyze. Beautiful, beautiful repertory, Bonninghausen. Just very quickly, another very beautiful repertory, which I also use in my practice a lot, um, is Clark repertory. Uh, this is also a very lesser used repertory. It's a clinical repertory. But the beautiful part about it is, is it's one of the causations, is one of the main things in this repertory. For example, I saw one case where she, the main symptom of the patient was that whenever she would get up early in the morning, earlier than what is a normal time, there would be a cough. So it's an interesting rubric, rising early aggravates, mentha biprata. I remember one case I did in Belgao, who of a guy who developed fever. And when I studied the case, the fever started after there was a family separation. So I look at the rubric home separation from, and there is phosphoric acid. So this is so beautiful, beautiful, beautiful repertory. And this is my life. This is the way I use repertory so beautifully. So I'm going to go ahead. I've written a book on this. I've re I'm going to tell you about my book. I've written a book on when to use which repertory. And this book will be hopefully be published in the next two months. I've already written it. It's undergoing editing. So it'll be very interesting for you. Now I'm going to talk about uh, the current topic for today, homeopathic approach in hormonal disorders. And this is very interesting because um, in today's times, there are many hormonal disorders, thyroid, polycystic ovarian disease, endometriosis, diabetes, prolactinoma and many, many different disorders and homeopathy is beautiful, beautiful for this treatment. What is the way of my analysis? And, and a lot of my students, students and a lot of my friends who are watching this. This is the map that I use in uh, hormonal cases. I focus at the chief complaint and you can see the chief complaint. I look at, look at the chief complaint. I look at the exciting factor and then I start mapping the entire case. I start looking at past history, family history, the generalities, the dreams, the fears, the general state of mind, the exciting factor, the crisis situation. 
And once I scan the entire case, then I try to find the patterns that you see in the crisis situation. And then I match patterns. And then I look at rubrics, repertory, materia medica, kingdom, miasm, and then I form the remedy. Isn't it interesting? Say yes. Okay. So this is the thing that I use. Um, and I think it will be interesting for me to straight away start with a very interesting case. So this is a case of azospermia. And like I told, I see many, many cases of azospermia, um, infertility, polycystic ovarian disease, thyroid cases, with beautiful, beautiful results. And I want to tell you, I finished my graduation 10 years back. Okay. And I was a very, very notorious student um, in my college. But, but with a little bit of passion, a little bit of guidance and crazy amount of hard work, you can reach anywhere. And that's what I'm going to show you through the cases. So this is a case of azospermia, 45 year old man. And you can see he had almost zero sperm count when I saw him. Um, now I'm going to tell you about the case. So low sperm count, unable to conceive due to it. Also had eczema itching. His main problem, he would say is, I'm not so worried about my sperm count, he would say. He would say, I'm more worried about my wife than myself. I can't see myself okay but i can't see my wife in pain i can't see her suffering what do i tell you what i'm going through i feel that she's my strength and my weakness she's everything for me so i asked her and this is what i often do in my case taking what was the most stressful situation in your life and she says i was engaged to my current wife but her parents didn't agree last minute so i had to leave and she had to go away and get engaged to someone else and that was the most difficult situation in my life now this is important when someone tells me what was the most difficult situation and someone tells me this was a difficult situation in my life i don't stop there i try to go more deeper in the situation this is what you have to do you have to go more deeper this is situation you have to go more deeper and deeper and deeper into the experience of the person what was the person's individual experience was it anger was it grief was it sadness what was it so i asked what was it for you so he said, I, as if a kind of missing feeling, I felt unloved. I felt no one. I felt, I felt as if love was missing. What is love? Love is like a responsibility of a person who is with you. Love is like how mother would take care of a child. Now, this is very interesting. You know, I ask her about what was this difficult situation. He talks about love and then he talks about responsibility. And then he talks about his mother. And interestingly, he says that my mother has never hugged me in my life. My mother has never hugged me. He, I have never got the love from my mother. This is, you, you try now understanding this pattern. Homeopath has to be a little bit like a detective. He has to be a little bit about understanding different patterns of a person. And that's why I do. That's what I do. And that's why I believe I'm doing fairly good. So he says, I feel very, very unloved. Then I asked about the dreams. And he says, the dreams is as if someone is chasing me. I feel very restless. I can't sit idle. I, I just get very worried about my wife's health and I don't know what to do. Interesting. So, I, so again, dreams is very important in case taking. Dreams often explain you the subconscious state of a person. By Sigmund Freud, one of the greatest psychologists in the world, spoke about how dreams is a window for opening the inner pattern of a subconscious state. So very important to understand not just dream, but what are the symbolic patterns in the dream and how those patterns connect to the rest of the case? Then I ask, can you tell me about yourself? And he says that I'm a very passionate person. I tend to be very restless and I want to do something for others. And I was working in an old company as a salesperson and I became a CEO of that company. But later on, I didn't get along with the owner of the company. He couldn't take my rise and I wanted to do something for people. I gave a lot of jobs to people. So after this, I started my own company on my own. And I saw so many, many poor people and I can't take it. I feel a need to take responsibility for them. So this is a guy who talks a lot about love. He talks about his wife. He talks about his mother. And then he talks about responsibility. And he says responsibility for him is the power to make a change. Responsibility for him is, is something that he started so that he can give jobs to many, many people. And then he says, from college take days, I would always take a lead in everything. I would always be the main person. I would always take a stand. I always had leadership qualities. 
then i asked him again do you remember any other stressful situation in your life and he says especially when my grandfather died he says it was a difficult situation he felt very lonely who will take care of him he said he felt he he tried to be very strong he tried to take all responsibility on himself he felt a lot of responsibility on him and he wanted to hold on he wanted to hold on to the grandfather then i asked can you tell me a little bit about your interest and hobby and he says he likes to be the chief he likes to be in charge of the situation he likes to lead he likes to excel he is very very passionate about anything he does he feels better when he is occupied he loves traveling and he likes going to different different places he is very very ambitious generalities he is very chilly he likes biryani a lot interest from your city and uh, he likes different different food items now this is the case how do we analyze this case let's think so this is the case this is the way you have to understand once you do the case and the case all cases are different and you have to think how do we analyze this case when we analyze this case i try to understand the state and what is the main state of this person the main state of this person is a person who needs a lot of care who needs a lot of affection who needs a lot of emotion he who feels very lonely he feels no one with him he feels he needs to hold on to his mother but mother never gave him love so you see this on one side care love emotion nutrition and on another side you also see a person who is very very highly responsible a person who's always leading who has to be on himself he has to be an example he wants to do on his own he wants to be a leader and who is a chief so you see in this case there are almost two sides on one side this care love emotion etc and on the side is you see a responsibility leading etc now this is very important that the main thing that you see in him is the lacking of love lacking of care and wanting to be independent now this particular theme is generally belonging to mineral kingdom so let me teach you a little bit about how to understand mineral kingdom and i hope that some day i can teach you all these different different minerals and i can come to your college or maybe i can do a webinar for you to teach all this in detail because i am going to talk to you all this in next half an hour a little bit a little bit of an idea so if you see this closely this is the periodic table this is a periodic table given by shalton shalton was the first person who came up with understanding the periodic table and homeopathy and if you see here the periodic table you can see there are seven columns this is here row 1 this is hydrogen and helium row 2 you can see lithium row 3 you can see natrium row 4 you can see kali row 5 you can see your strontium row 6 you can see your barita row 7 you can see a radium you can see this right so these are different 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 periodic table uh, different different rows in the periodic table and what are the themes of the periodic table row 1 has to do more with do i exist or do i not row 2 which is lithium has to do with very very clingy like clinging on to mother or like fear of separation row 3 has to do with love care nutrition row 4 has to do with security and health and finance and money row 5 has to do more with creativity and you can see argentum and palladium row 6 has to do with barita or aurum and it has to do with responsibility row 7 has to do with destruction or radium bromide so now understanding all of this where are we so we need a salt which is which is having for example the need of love here and also the desire to be responsible so a remedy which is from third row and sixth row and which is that remedy any idea so for that we'll have to understand the repertory so then you can see this i put everything in the repertory and when i put in the repertory and you can see this repertory sheet in front of you and you can see this beautiful beautiful remedy coming up aurum mur natrum atom and you can see the rubric four second feeling holding desire occupation responsibility suicidal position desert dictatorial dreams of being pursued also alcoholic very ambitious anger violent and you can see beautifully the remedy coming up aurum muriaticum natrum atom and when i find this exact remedy and you can see how i have analyzed the remedy you no know, 
I have analyzed the rubrics, the repertory, the materia medica, the classical homeopathy. And on another side, I've understood the periodic table, the kingdom, the rose. And then once I get all of this and I gave very beautifully aurum unitronum, just one dose. And just in two months, his sperm count beautifully, beautifully improved. This is the beauty of understanding homeopathy. And to understand really, really in depth, you need to understand the periodic table. You need to understand the mineral chart. You need to understand different repertories. You have to understand what is synthetic prescription, which means what is a salt. Salt is because there is aurum, there is muriaticum element and natronatum. So this is what makes a salt. So beautiful. Are you all with me? Hello? Are you all with me? Are you understanding what I'm saying? You can just put your hands up and I can see that. Okay, raised hand, many hand raised. Okay, super. Oh God, okay, many hands raised. Okay, my hands also raised. Okay, I never seen this before, huh? All hands raised on the screen, so I can't work. Good idea. So if you don't like a speaker, you can just all put your hands raised and the speaker won't be able to speak. Super. <laughs> I'm just giving you ideas. Okay, let's go to one more case. Are you getting an idea? Now I'll do you one more very interesting case and uh, maybe it's interesting for you. Hmm. Let's see. There are many, many cases, many, many that I removed for you, but I'm going to very quickly tell you about uh, one more case. Okay, one more case of infertility. Okay. So this is another case of infertility um, of azospermia with a very, very low sperm count. Okay, you can see no spermatozoa. Okay. So see all, it's very important. Many homeopaths are watching me here. It is very important to document your cases. Every case you should have reports. Every cases you should have documents because in today's time you need to have reports and documents. Without reports and documents, you cannot do anything. Okay. So if you are anywhere, you're starting your homeopathy or you're a practitioner or whatever you're doing, start documenting reports, start keeping documents of the reports and everything. So this is a case with low sperm count and doctor said nothing can be done now. Uh, he also has recurrent cold and cough and cough is especially when he's lying down. And um, when I asked him, how did your stress situation started? He said death of a relative and that affected him. And he says now he's not capable of doing anything. Then he speaks about his fears and his biggest fear is, is of cats. And he gets dreams of cats that cats will come and attack him from behind and that they will bite him. And he feels very, very scared of cats and dogs. In childhood, he was very, very shy and he wouldn't talk to anyone. But he had a very, very weird sexual uh, attractions and in, he would get many, many fears. When he would get many, many fears, yeah, he would tend to sit alone and not talk to anyone. There's a lot of fear within her. A lot of craving for milk, a lot of craving for chalk, and he wouldn't sweat at all. Very, very chilly and introverted. His problem was he was very, very suspicious by nature. And his main problem was that he would feel that anyone would cheat him a lot. And that was his biggest fear, that no one should cheat him. And he has a tendency towards attraction towards male. And he would feel form very traumatized if someone would make fun of him. So this is the case in short. How do we analyze this case? So I'll just tell you, there are many peculiarities. There is a sexual abuse in this case. There is a fear of cats. There's recurrent fear, there's cough. So what is the most peculiar thing in the case? That cough is especially at night, especially from fright. And only one remedy there, hyoscyamus. And during fever, he doesn't want to be talked to. And there is fear of being bitten, fear of everything, fear of chronic, fear of betrayed. Being betrayed is the main feeling of hyoscyamus. And dreams of cats, fear of cats is also hyoscyamus. And also desire for chalk, inedible things. Beautifully, beautifully, beautifully. This is ladies and gentlemen, hyoscyamus. So Hyosamus 1M2 doses and beautifully the sperm count came back to normal. And you can see the sperm count is 192 minutes. So beautiful. This is homeopathy, ladies and gentlemen. This is what I want you to learn. Beautifully the sperm count can increase. And this is what I've been doing for, for years now. With beautiful, beautiful, beautiful results. Are you getting an idea? Say yes. 
Okay, lot of hands raised. Superb. So the way I learned homeopathy also was very interesting because I learned homeopathy from a really a lot of people. I spent a lot of time uh, devoting uh, my time to different different homeopaths. I learned from different schools. So I learned classical homeopathy. I learned ICR homeopathy from ICR school. I learned Kolkata homeopathy. I went to Calcutta. I stayed with Dr. Sarkar, L.M. Khan, Subhas Singh. Uh, I stayed in NIH college for six months. I learned, uh, I spent a lot of time with Dr. Sankar and I'm still learning. I spent a lot of time with Ashok Mohanty and uh, Segal method. So I tried to learn different, different techniques. And uh, once I learned this, you know, I know what technique to use where. I can easily see the case and tell that, you know, in this case, this approach is needed. So my approach is like that, that, you know, it's never fixed. It's, it's always, it's always a kind of a approach where I, I see the case and then I decide the approach. So a lot of young students who are watching me, just remember that you don't have to get stuck to any approach or stuck to any method. You have to learn all different techniques. No method is wrong. And all homeopaths are good. Every homeopath, from every homeopath, you can learn something. Whenever I meet anyone, whenever I meet anyone, I always try to learn something. I went to Kerala, I spent a little bit of a time with Dr. Biju, for example, huh? seeing what work he's doing in HIV, etc. When I go to Tamil Nadu, I will spend some time with, uh, there is one doctor, Dr. Ashok, I learn from him. When I go to Sangli in Maharashtra, I learn something. When I went to Switzerland, I spent time with Heiner Fry. So, the idea is you should be ever learning. Never stop. Keep learning, keep learning, keep evolving, keep evolving. There's a kind of a nasha in that. There's a kind of addiction in that. Learning, learning, learning. Because once you keep learning, your horizons open, your views broaden. You start thinking much, much bigger than just this. So you start looking at different situations. Okay. So I'm going to tell you one more very, very quick case. And uh, then let's take it further. Okay. Okay, so this is a case of uh, autoimmune thyroiditis and she had come here, come to see me. Um, 37 year old lady, she had a swelling, swallowing was a difficulty, a lot of body ache. And when I studied the history in detail, I found out that she used to get a lot of heat flushes, a lot of heat flushes all over the body. And then she used to get a lot of sweat and then, and you can see this report was swollen in thyroid scan. She would also feel very sleepy. She was starting to put on weight. She would want to lie down. She was very lethargic. She didn't have any power to work, wants to lie down, can't tolerate to do any household work also. Constantly would like to be in open air. Can't be in closed rooms at all. She was also very, very, become very, very emotional and sensitive. And um, slightest thing, if anyone would say, that would affect her a lot. And her husband also was sick, even thinking about him. She used to get very, very, very anxious. She was very anxious, generally. And she couldn't tolerate warm atmosphere. And she had a lot of desire for sweets and aversion to spicy and a lot of sweat. So based on this, what did I do? In this type of cases, I use a lot of Fartak repertory. So what did I do? So I looked at rubric, heat flushes, yawning, room in aggravates, mental emotions aggravate, sweet gushing, and I saw amyl nitrosum as the remedy. And I gave amyl nitrosum, which is a very important remedy, causing dilatation of arterioles and capillaries and flushing and anxiety and better in open air and aggravated climactric amyl nitrosum one dose. And beautifully, beautifully. There was a change in the first month and then she beautifully improved. Isn't it very interesting? Huh? Say yes. Okay, a lot of hands up, huh? All right, all right. It's so good. It's so good to get so much of love from all your students. Okay, another case of alopecia also has PCOS. Um, she had a lot of hair fall. Periods was the issue. I wouldn't say fully PCOS, but she had menstrual issues. Um, lying down with amitrate, the bleeding, dysmenorrhea, loose stools, menses, clotted, 
um, discoloration around the skin, lot of itching, dandruff, alopecia, headaches, cough, cold, coryza, menarche, puberty, menses also. But she, everything started after a divorce. And her main feeling was she felt she felt she couldn't handle rejection and failure. And she said that I have been topper and monitor and I have performed well always, but I can't handle failure and rejection. I should always be first. And if I don't come first, I feel worthless. I feel I should be perfect. I feel people should appreciate me. But no one understands me, she says. And she keeps talking a lot. Her main thing I see, she keeps talking and she talks with a lot of animation, like this, like this, like this. I cannot see someone ahead of me. I cannot see myself back. I am very competitive. I have to go ahead. I want to be the best. I like appreciation. When you are second, no one asks you. You have no value. What is value? I feel worthless or I'm doing very unimportant work. They tell me to uh, 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 clean all utensils, everything. I don't like, I don't like doing dirty, unimportant work. I feel I'm totally useless of no value. I feel like dustbin. Why is it important for you to come first? Because if you come first, she says, then people will appreciate you. I will feel extraordinary. I always feel important. When you come second, you're no value, you're worthless. No use, no one cares. It's as if you don't exist, as if you are being used up in a tissue paper and you have no value in the garbage and no value and you, you are thrown away. And then she talks about her married life and about her married life. She says, my in-laws never accepted me. They never loved me. They rejected me, felt useless, no worth, no use of substance. They insulted me. This was the main feeling. In dream, someone is trapping me trying to physically molest me, dreams of dead people, someone forcefully rape, raping me. I feel very, very helpless. Sometimes I feel someone is following me. Desire for a lot of chocolate, thirstless. So now how do we analyze this case? What do you see as the main thing? So you see a lot of you versus me. You see, I am nothing. If he, she says about dustbin, she talks about dirty, she talks about garbage. She feels that she's doing unimportant work. Yeah. This is generally giving you idea of animal kingdom. And this is generally mammal family. And this is generally a lack remedy, like lack caninum. But is this lack caninum? No. So this is when we use repertory. And when I open the repertory and I want to show you a very interesting remedy today, I'm going to teach you a new remedy to all my participants there. So what's the remedy? I've looked at the rubric. I've looked at delusion, worthless, delusion, stupid, forsaken feeling, fight wants to fright. And you can see beautiful, beautiful remedy, the remedy lack asylum. So I gave the remedy lack asylum 1M for two days. And beautifully she improved and she sent me a testimonial and this is lack asylum. And what's the idea of lack asylum? What I want to tell you about lack asylum? The main rubric of lack asylum, the main feeling as if they have to do all dirty, unimportant work, as if everything is dumped on you, as if you're a beast of burden. How to differentiate between lack asylum, lack caninum, lack caninum, the main idea is you're being put down, you're being looked down upon. There's a constant feeling in lack asylum, as if they are burdened, as if they are stupid, unimportant, neglected, not given attention, worthless as if they have to do all the dirty work, as if they are very sensitive, they are very, very not important. Some more rubrics, delusion exerts himself, delusion he is stupid, work does dirty, and delusion worthless. Total feeling of worthlessness, total feeling of uselessness, total feeling of being abused. There's a feeling as if they are in the jail. Many, many women when they get married, they feel as if I'm, I'm, as if I'm in a jail, I want freedom but they can't and that is often a state of lack or a group of remedies. Constant feeling that they are being laughed at. This is typically in a joint family. Dreams of being pursued also very strong in lack group of remedies. Very often they also come very close to pulsatilla 
and uh, yeah very important remedy for lichen planus also and many other hormonal related diseases so this is a little bit the constant feeling also is of shame in lack asinum what are the keywords the keywords is of burden weighed down load and all that burdened feeling confined fenced so this is a little bit i wanted to share with you about lack asinum tell me did you get an idea say a yes okay many yeses but generally you got an idea about how i do things uh so we have more 10 minutes are you there hello i hope someone can hear me hello can i continue for 10 minutes more sir no reply that means i can just continue okay let me let me very quickly do one more very very quick case okay um okay let's see okay also very quick case 38 year old man with azospermia almost you can see no sperms and um, the thing about him was again infertility and infertility has beautiful results in homeopathy even male female thyroid he says he feels very very stressed and he constantly his basic nature is that he accepts things and he tends to postpone things a lot and his memory is very weak he doesn't remember people's names especially his wife's brother's name he says he doesn't feel like doing anything and sometimes he stands in the room and not knowing why he's standing he forgets smallest of things he even forgets the names of people even what he's kept he forgets everything he's also very sensitive if someone is talking to him and someone talks in middle suddenly he forgets the whole conversation he keeps thinking about past things a lot he gets many many dreams scary dreams very often and uh, another thing about him he doesn't like change a lot he doesn't like change if there's a slight change in routine he doesn't like it and he has a lot of craving for pani puri and lot of khatta meetha sweet and sour substances and he plans a lot he makes many many ideas many many thoughts but he ends up doing nothing so what do we do in this case so focus at symptoms you have never heard before what is the clearest study the repertory and what are we going to look at so we look at the dreams and dreams you can see dreams of everything being bitten and you can see a remedy coming up and you can see absent minded standing in one place never accomplishes what he takes medorinum and the memory weakness of friends of intimate friends of where he has kept him this is medorinum postponing this is very strong of medorinum when someone constantly postpones its medorinum constant thinking about past is also medorinum lot of ideas but doesn't do what is planned this medorinum and this is medorinum totally change over and also met right and loses thread of conversation so yeah that's what i gave medorinum 1m two doses and at the end of 6 months beautifully 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 the sperm count came back to normal this is homeopathy and homeopathy is beautiful 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 for this kind of disorders absolutely beautiful so i was thinking that before i finish and i think i have 10 minutes maybe i can take some questions are you getting an idea say yes you can put your hands up maybe okay all of you are there super feels great that i am not alone talking okay maybe someone can help me with the questions i don't know how to look here in the comments maybe i'll see here okay all right maybe someone can write in the chat box about comments and i can, about the questions and i can read some questions and i'll try to answer
Okay. One of the question is hypothyroidism. Yes, this is a good question. So I I am doing some research on thyroid cases, also on PCOD cases, and I have written a book on thyroid. Okay, and um, with few cases. But I am doing now a research work on thyroid, where where we are trying to document hundred cases of hypothyroidism treated by homeopathy. This is what we are doing. So. It's a beautiful, beautiful uh, work that we are doing. It's our team that we are doing it. Um, I've written a book. We are collecting cases, and it will be beautiful if you could join. Please talk about PCOS. Yeah, PCOS is very, very interesting. You know, I'm seeing a lot of cases of PCOS in my practice. Um, about PCOS, I'll tell you, it requires a lot of time. It requires a lot of changes in diet, in lifestyle. Um, and i use a lot of sarcodes in it for example one of my favorite remedies also that you should know about there is no favorite remedy in homeopathy but i use a lot of folliculinum in pcos with beautiful results i use a lot of lac remedies many many remedies like that you know you have to finally you have to individualize you know that is the secret of homeopathy some more questions when and what to focus on mind symptoms so focus on deepest patterns focus on the most intense thing focus on things which are repeated uh stub intercurrent remedies there is nothing called as intercurrent read me you have to find remedy for the patient how to treat diabetes mellitus with lifestyle change and individualized remedy why not lycopodium why not medorinum because medorinum was indicated please talk about lack remedies you yeah, use a lot of lack remedies actually let's see if i have some presentation here on lack you know sometimes i keep some presentations maybe i can tell you i use a lot of lack remedies in my practice with beautiful results for example just very quickly this is a very important rubric of mammals desire to please you know the lack remedies always they try to please everyone they will always try to be in good books everyone this is like i'll try to do a webinar some day for you just talking about uh, lack chronic pancreatitis we can definitely help kishan we can help pancreatitis cases folliculinum 30c potency i generally use um decoding dreams yeah you have to analyze dreams really well you have to understand the subconscious state belua merlin how to prescribe folliculinum folliculinum has a very important state of mind there is always a history of abuse often a sexual abuse in folliculinum and uh, there are people who are under a lot of pressure and all symptoms are before and during the menses this is typical picture of folliculinum i use a lot i hope you read my book i have written a book called as materia medica of sarcodes and nosodes so if you get a chance you read this book another book i have written is decoding let's see decoding mental rubrics where i have explained all these rubrics how do you contact khadija how to contact you you can contact me no problem where is my email id okay i'll write for you this is my email id uh, gorang@gmail.com you can email me you can email me all of you so we have about 800 people you tell me how was today's talks and tell me what was important for what was interesting for you email me what you learned and keep in touch with me on youtube there is a channel called as homeopathic hub okay you can you can subscribe to it i have put more than 300 videos there i hope some of you uh, have some of you ever seen my videos on homeopathic hub say yes put your hands up super super salam super super so you can watch a lot of my videos i do a lot of webinars uh, there is something i do called as materia medica series live i haven't done it this week but it will be happening next week so join me for that at some point um yeah so one of your question one more question what is what is my suggestion for young students yes my my suggestion to young students is is be brave be courageous learn from everyone but listen to what you feel is right listen to your experience 
master the basics you should know allen's keynotes borick fatak kent nash all this by heart in and out when i was in fourth year in my college and when i was studying it in in our and i come from mumbai in my college library there was not a single book which i had not read i knew all the books in and out in fact many college teachers would ask me this symptom is there in which remedy when i was in my internship so i took a lot of pride in what i do so take a lot of pride in what you do take it like this is what you are made for so master your basics and then start reading the advancements start reading and then start innovative work and finally stay hungry stay foolish some more question i can take maybe one or two questions is there any pattern to deal with autoimmune disease you have to change a lot of diet also of the patients uh, avoid milk sugar and wheat and reduce non veg and you have to find deeper remedy sometimes you have to find the remedy at a deepest level how we know rubric of dream delusion to understand mind of a patient for that you'll have to read all the dreams and delusion of the repertory so open kent repertory nazia read all rubrics of dreams all rubric of delusion then email me your suggestion from beginners you this is my suggestion start basics become master of allens borick fatak and kent and then meet me soria says yes homeopathy has good results mm natramure and carcinosin sadabdi sarma see natramure has a problem with one to one relationship so the main symptom of natramure is is falls in love with the wrong person interestingly everyone almost falls in love with the wrong person pun intended but um, <clears throat> the idea of natramuriaticum is, is is the idea of wanting to have one to one relationship wanting to have lot of care lot of love lot of nutrition and not getting that and that is typically natramuriaticum aversion to person is also natural muriatic the main feeling is of betrayal is of natural muriatic and then we look at carcinosin carcinosin is different remedy the whole idea of carcinosin is 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 that everything has to be in control and they can't take anything beyond control this is carcinosin some more questions shriya nishant how do you teach so good i just hope you could be my teacher in college well in today's times you will find very good teachers in your college and i'm sure in your college also there are beautiful teachers all teachers need very very brilliant students so you be a good student you'll find a good teacher how to find confidence only by mastering skills best repertory for beginners kent and fatak your word on covid individualize the cases john how to remember more books love fall in love with homeopathy you are falling in love with wrong people fall in love with homeopathy one word about covid 19 yeah individualize cases use boger bonning or send report to use lot of modalities find indicated remedy don't get stuck to remedies just told by anyone try to try to you individualize the case and prescribe don't be scared treat it like just another viral i just had a very beautiful case of uh, covid admitted in in hospital almost bad case uh, respiratory failure i gave the remedy bromium beautifully it came out so beautiful bromium on individualization i don't give randomly so i think that's about it because there are many many questions i can't answer everything but i hope you email me and i hope you had a good time today um talking about homeopathy and i hope you fall in love with homeopathy thank you so much plain general okay sir i think i'm going to take a um, leave from from you i hope you had a good time you can just raise your hands so that i know that you you got a good idea today all right thank you thank you thank you dr gaykor thank you dr garan thank you thank you pleasure pleasure i hope i hope i come to your platform again and really discuss more ideas with all your students i i i will bring you to my platform because you are a lecturer was wonderful
Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure is mine. Yeah, you are introduced to me by Dr. Biju, who is a personal friend of mine. Yes, yes. Dr. Biju is someone I am very, very close to, and I he is an inspiration for me, sir. Yeah, he is a close friend of mine. We worked together right from 1992. Fantastic. Give my give my regards to him. I will I will convey the regards because I have thanked him also. Absolutely. I will give a special thanks to him for Thank introducing you. you to me. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. Pleasure, sir. Pleasure. When you come to Mumbai, definitely meet me. I will come. Uh, uh, Doctor uh, Jawahar is a personal friend of me. Absolutely, absolutely. When you come to Mumbai, meet me. So, okay. I I had my personal education from Mumbai. Now Mumbai. All right, all right, all right. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. So, on behalf of every participants, I'm thanking thank you for thank the you. wonderful thank session. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Pleasure. Thank I will I will give you the feedback tomorrow. Okay. I will call you personally and I will give you the feedback tomorrow. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I'm thanking all the participants. And I want to tell you tomorrow it is Dr. Ajit Kulkarni coming with the amazing cases in homeopathy. We will be here route travel right from 7:15, and I'm welcoming everybody for the fourth day of Dr. Ajit Kulkarni. Okay. I will unmute everybody. Well, I will unmute everybody now. But you can tell me about the session. The session. Somebody can tell me about the session. Again, I am saying that tomorrow it is Dr. Ajit Kumkande, after tomorrow it is Dr. Manila, Tuesday it is Dr. Vijayanam, Dr. Krishna Mohan. Technical issues at the basement. Tomorrow we will try to solve the problem. Today I want to announce that today there was a technical problem in the basement. Think of the opening. Tomorrow we will settle that problem also. Okay. Okay, any suggestions from your side? Your voice is not that clear, sir. My voice is not clear. Disturbing voice. Presenter's voice was good, sir, but your voice is not clear. Sir. The problem is there is a lot of voice coming in. Please unmute the thing. Okay, then we will let the meeting. We will end the meeting. Okay, okay, okay. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Okay.